In GIMP, there are two separate selection tools, the first of which is the Rectangle Select tool, which is on the upper left-hand corner of your GIMP toolbox, and then right next to it is the Ellipse Select tool, and these are both very similar. And I'm going to cover both of those tools along with the Move tool and the Fill tools in this video. So first off, selecting uh, the Rectangle Select tool, I'm just going to click and drag on my document here. Uh, and you'll notice that as long as I'm still holding down the mouse button, I can manipulate my area um, that I'm going to select as much as I want. So I'm just going to let go of that mouse button. And now we see the little walking ants, marching ants of the line <laughs> around the selection. It doesn't really look like ants to me, but that's what they call it. Uh, and then you'll notice that I can actually manipulate my selection even after I've placed it by clicking and dragging on one of these four corners, little tabs that pop up, or by moving my mouse close to the edges. And then you can see uh, these other tabs pop up and I can resize that way. So that's fairly cool. Now, from here, there's two little bits of functionality with uh, control and shift hotkeys that the rectangle tool uh, can use. So I'm gonna deselect everything by pressing control, shift, A, and that is the deselect hotkey. Uh, I'm gonna draw a new uh, selection, but this time I'm going to hold down control. And what that does is control makes your selection expand from the center instead of from the corner like that. It'll be from the center like that. So that's interesting. And then if you hold down shift like I am right here, it's going to take on the most uh, recently used aspect ratio. So right here is a square because my most recently used aspect ratio uh, was one to one and you can see as I press shift the little box in the corner that says fixed that actually uh, gets checked as I press shift so let's say that I've drawn this this selection I'm gonna make a new selection and hold down shift and it's gonna keep that aspect ratio so that's interesting and you can type in your own aspect ratio here uh, and if you just type in current let's see what that does type in current it's kinda kind of crazy so it keeps the last aspect ratio there uh, which is interesting so very cool and then next to that the ellipse selection tool is very similar uh, you use a circular sort of object here uh, and you can make circular shapes so same idea manipulatable after the fact by using the tabs and then you can uh, edit this selection whoever you want. So let's say that I wanted to uh, take this selection and make it f uh, filled with a color. I could go edit and then fill with foreground color. And my foreground color is white right now, so that didn't do anything, but I'll do it again. Now it's black-ish, uh, and that's, that's how you generate shapes using the selection tools. You can also make a new selection, and then we could go edit and then stroke selection. You could stroke it with a line, or you could stroke it with the paint tool. I'm going to stroke it with a line, and then you've got a line box thing. So this is very useful for creating borders. Uh, say I want to create a one pixel border around my document. I'm just going to select the whole document and then go edit, stroke selection, solid line, whoa, two pixels, let's say. And we get this border. You can kind of see around the edge there. So. That's very useful. Now moving on to the move tool. The move tool is cool because you have these two little toggle modes. One of them is move the active layer. That would be this layer. And the other one is pick a layer or guide. And you can swap between these by pressing shift uh, or by going over here to the tool options and then clicking the one you want using the radio buttons or excuse me, radial buttons. Uh, and then so say I want to move the active layer. Uh, it'll move only the layer that I have selected. If not, it'll click on the one behind it or whatever. Uh, it'll select the layer that I'm actually pointing at instead of just generally assuming. So that's cool. And that's the move tool. Very essential tool. I uh, keep hotkey M is you're going to be using that a lot. So that's pretty neat. Now, moving on to the fill tools, we've got two different fill tools here. One of them is the bucket fill tool, which is uh, like, like a blanket. Just if you ever used uh, Microsoft's paint, 
You'll already know the functionality of this. It just fills everything you can within a selection. And then the gradient fill tool takes a number of colors and mixes them into a gradient. So if I select my entire layer, I'll create a new layer here actually. Uh, so there's my new layer. I'm gonna go to the bucket fill tool, then it fills my entire selection. Whereas if I do a new layer, I'll do an ellipse here, right at the corner, pull out my gradient tool, and I've got foreground to background selected. And um, I'm just gonna drag from the upper left hand to the bottom right hand corner. We've got that nice little gradient sphere right there. I don't know what you'd use that for, but um, you can create some interesting effects. Let's say that we wanted to have like a subtle, subtle background blend. We could mix a gray and sort of a darker gray here. We'd have a nice subtle background. So very useful uh, for creating all kinds of effects and I use it a lot in my tutorials. So definitely a good tool to know how to use.